Coming up on the Lakeside Loop, our anchor, Natalie Pop, meets Todd Fisher. Swing Choir performs in Choral Fest, and Cross Country takes second in state. The Loop starts now. Welcome to the Lakeside Loop. We're glad to be back. I'm Nellie Pop. And I'm Juan Gulrud. Both the girls and boys cross country teams made it to state this year. The boys were blessed with a second place finish. Arnold Rupnow shares the story with us. Uh, so on October 29th, the cross country teams went up to Wisconsin Rapids to race at the state meet. Eight, seven, six, six, six five, five. Uh, getting up there, there's a lot of pe there's a lot of people up there, so the the um, energy there was pretty crazy. And at every race, there's like a herd of people running around watching you. Um, the girls raced first, and they raced very well. Um, they came out of a very competitive race at the sections, and I think they were very excited because it's it's been a few years since they had qualified, and I think they thoroughly enjoyed how they raced up there. Um, on the guys' side, um, we went in with a lot of expectations, knowing that we could perform very well there, and I think we exceeded those expectations, taking home the runners-up. Cameron Austin, head coach, congratulations. Division two, team runner-up. Um, there was a, quite a few PRs and personal bests. Um, and I think people were generally very happy with how they raced that day. The start of the race is at the state meet is very fast because all the people there are obviously very fast, so they get out a little faster and then the energy also contributes to that. So you kind of got to rein it back a little bit so you don't go out too fast. But once you get into it, it's, it's hard to say, say how, I mean you hear the crowd, but at the same time you don't because you're focused and that it gives you like motivation and keep, to keep going throughout the course. There wasn't many areas on the course where there weren't people, so there's people cheering for you, and especially on the finish line, it's a lot of crazy noise, and it really makes you go fast. Um, for me, it's the bond you get to create with your teammates, because running like seven miles with another person, you really get to know who they are, and like, a lot of things about them so you really create this strong bond that you wouldn't otherwise have with a person. Great work guys on making it that far. God's blessings on your offseason. This past week Lakeside Swing Choir competed in the Regional Chora Fest at Bethany Lutheran College in Mankato, Minnesota. There they performed in both the Sacred Concert and a Pops Concert. Here's Grace Korth for more. Swing Choir at Lakeside visited Choral Fest. Here's how it went. Oh, when you're done, I'll make This past weekend, I went to Coral Fest in Minnesota, Mankato, to be specific. It was held at Bethany Lutheran College, and it was actually their first year hosting it. It was regionals, so it wasn't national. It was 10 schools. And to go through the days, Friday night was a wild night. We had the Pops concert, so each school got to perform a song. We actually did two. But we performed Killer and, or no, Human by the Killers, and then we performed Dance Monkey. That was a great night. Saturday was a lot of singing. We had to prepare for the sacred concert on Sunday, and so we sang so many songs, like the whole day was singing. But on a Saturday night, they rewarded us with a dance, and so that was pretty fun. And Sunday, we all got to sing at our churches, and then we all came back to go to Bethany, and we sang at the sacred concert. So we sang All That Has Life and Breath because I was part of the Ubalate Choir. Lakeside was in the Ubalate. And we also sang a 13 minute piece of four different songs. I can't remember all the songs, but it was a huge piece. There was 10 schools, I know for sure. Students, I don't have an exact number, but I would estimate probably around 350, 400 people. We left right after the early release on Thursday. I think we got out at 105, and so we left with a bus at 1.30. Traveled all the way to Rochester, took a break, got some dinner, and then we went all the way to Mankato. And we got there, I think it was around 9.30, 9.45. It was a late night. They were all late nights, <laughs> but it was a good time. Throughout the month of October, we got here around 7 a.m. every Tuesday and Thursday and practiced for about an hour. The choreography takes a lot of time for, like, to make it look good. And Mrs. Springborn actually came up with the choreography with Mr. Springborn. 
it was a great experience, honestly. Met so many new people, and I was just so happy to enjoy the gift of singing with everyone. I think swing choir is fun because the people that really love choir go to swing choir, and so you just become almost like a team. It's not athletic, of course, but you are so close together because you work together, you put in hard work, and it all pays off in the end. Up to the platform of surrender I was wrong, but I was fine Sometimes I get nervous When I see an open door Close your eyes, clear your heart Cut the cord Are we human? Or are we dancers? Awesome performance, Swing Choir. Thank you for using your God-given talents and abilities to give glory to God. Some upperclassmen had the chance to drive up to Martin Luther College in New Ulm, Minnesota, and to experience college life on the campus. MLC is a teacher and pastor training college for our synod. Ashlyn Jones explains more. 48 juniors and seniors recently went on a fall-focused trip to Martin Luther College. These students went on the trip to consider the possibility of attending MLC and becoming a pastor or teacher. I kind of wanted to experience MLC kind of side. I just wanted to see how it would be at MLC and what classes and stuff would be there. We left from Lakeside to Rochester and then from Rochester to MLC. And then after that, we dropped off all of our stuff at the hotel. I went to MLC, hanged out with a bunch of college students, and then we had a meeting with all the college um, grads and all the other stuff with them. And then afterwards, we played a few games with them. And then there was a dinner, and there was a night where it was participants could either come with students to play games with them, or you could go to the basketball game. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then. Next day, we actually planned on going to chapel, went to a few classes, see what it was like, and then afterwards he said, hey, if you guys think about interest in this, we're ready to have you guys here. So the purpose of an MLC trip is basically to try to get students to be pastors and teachers and try to get them on the at least teacher and pastor track of the area. But I think that's really part of the trip, just to see if people want to go there. So I thought it was really fun overall. I mean, if anything, I'll let anyone else do it see what it's like. I mean, you could always change your mind for college. You could always just change your mind regardless if you want to go to the pastor or teacher. Thanks to all who made this trip possible. You may know Natalie Pop, my co-host. Well, recently she had the opportunity to meet Todd Fisher and Katherine Hickland. Todd Fisher is the son of Debbie Reynolds, the star of Singing in the Rain, and the brother of Carrie Fisher, who played Princess Leia in Star Wars. Katherine Hickland, Todd's wife, is an accomplished actress that starred in many TV series. Here's a story for those who especially enjoy Star Wars and musicals. So a couple weeks ago, I had the chance to go to Vegas and see Debbie Reynolds' son and her daughter-in-law's collection of all her memorabilia because her daughter is Carrie Fisher, who was in Star Wars, so I got to see a bunch of costumes and scripts and a bunch of signed posters and pictures. In November, I was in a part of Singing in the Rain where I played Debbie Reynolds' character, Kathy Selden. I'd very much like to know whose hospitality I'm enjoying. Selden, Kathy Selden. Enchanted, Miss Selden. I'm sorry I frightened you. I was getting a little too much love from my adoring fans. I knew I'd seen you. Of course. Which of my pictures have you seen? Oh, I don't remember. I saw one once. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. And then my mom wanted to give me some um, memorabilia because they were doing an auction of her things. So she contacted them and she told them all the stuff I'd done, how I, when I was in third grade they did a, I did a wax museum and I was Debbie Reynolds. So I got to learn a lot about her then. So then in January they asked me to be part of an interview with them. So they interviewed me, asked me about like my connection with her because their goal is to just really um, have a younger generation learn about these people because it's like really important to them. Because we have Natalie here tonight and I'm going to bring her in in a minute. Uh, but this show it, like, is about dreams because Natalie has a dream. She's already starting on her dream. At 12 years old, you know, it's so important to know what you have, what you want. Uh, because you're, if, if you are, you know, interested in the performing arts like this, but it takes so much uh, gumption to do it. It takes a lot of rehearsal. It also takes a, a lot of, um, I don't know, honey, what would you Hutzpah. say? Chutzpah. Chutzpah. There's a good word for it. 
But um, what a beautiful job she did. We talked about the wax museum and how I was in Singing in the Rain. We talked about, they told me a little bit more about her and about the different things she had done, like she owned a dance studio, and they gave me a block of wood from the floor of the dance studio. So I learned a lot more about her and more personal things from their family. I loved how she always seemed to love what she was doing and how I've really been inspired by her dancing, singing, and acting. She's a triple threat. I love all the things she's done, all the movies, especially Singing in the Rain. But I just love her as a person and then her family, so that would be her son. They're, they're amazing people and I really loved hanging out with them and getting to know more. In their house they have a museum of all her memorabilia, so we got to see a lot of scripts, like original scripts, and costumes and posters that have been signed by all the actors in it. And then we also saw some Carrie Fisher stuff, who plays Princess Leia in Star Wars. We saw costumes and also some like very original scripts, like before it was even edited, and a bunch of posters from that too. Yeah, I spent seven hours with them, which means they love to talk about her, and they're just so easy to talk to, and they were really amazing, and I'm so happy I went. Thanks, Natalie, for sharing your experience. And now, you're in the loop. I'm Natalie Pop. And I'm Juan Gold. Have a great rest of your week.